Good day YouTubers, this is the second part of a short video series on doing detailing the mount I made to fit them in to my base port. I know there are a lot of people out there who want to mount one of these on a modern fiberglass half cabin. There's no denying that fitting a bow mounted trolling motor to a modern boat with electric winches, bow sprits, bow rollers, bow rails and fiberglass construction is a complex problem. I won't pretend that it was easy, but it's certainly not impossible. This was a prototype, but I made a few mistakes along the way, which had to be fixed. Since the video was shot as the job was done, these mistakes are not fixed until the end, so I advise you to watch all of the episodes before embarking on your own build, if you want to avoid the mistakes that I made. I've modified the CAD drawings that I started with to cover the changes that I had to incorporate to make this work. These are available now in PDF form. I'm not an engineer, so don't think you're going to get something that's properly engineered to do the job. It works for me, and if you'd like to get a copy of the plans to see how I did it, to give you a few clues on how you can go about doing it, I'm giving away a copy of the PDF files to anyone who's subscribed to my YouTube channel. To get a copy, just message me on my Facebook page, the link's in the description below. Ask for a copy of the plans and include your YouTube username that you use to subscribe to my channel. With all that covered, it's time to roll the clips. It's in the plans, but I didn't actually get a photo of making this. This is the backing plate that distributes the load inside the bow spit. It's made out of the same material I used for the top and bottom plates on the bracket, mainly because that's what I had available. I clamped this plate onto the bracket and drilled all of them together once I worked out where I needed the holes to go through the fiberglass. Then I mounted the bracket onto the boat, got it into position, and I used those holes as a guide to drill through the fiberglass on the boat so that all sets of holes matched up when I came to put it together. And once I had the holes drilled, the next order of business was to apply some duct tape quite liberally to make sure that the sticker plate didn't go anywhere that it wanted to go. And then I gave a very generous coat of sticker flex onto the top of the bow sprit underneath where the bracket was going to go and also gave a generous coat of stick flex on the reinforcing back plate which was going to go inside the bow sprit. The idea of using duct tape to protect the areas that I didn't want stick flex on isn't mine. I got the idea from painters using masking tape to protect the areas they didn't want to paint and I've got to say it works pretty well in this situation also. And if you haven't had the joy of using sticker flex or even Celastic, let me tell you, it can be mega messy. Now this is a point of no return. Once the sticker flex is on there and you start putting parts on it, you're going to make an unholy mess if you're not ready to go. So either make sure you've got everything you need within easy reach or preferably have someone standing by who can pass your stuff that you haven't got ready, just in case. Now the other reason this is a point of no return is that once the sticker flex is dry, this thing is staying there. It's going to take some major effort to get it off, and that's really what I want. But the downside is, when you're building a prototype, if you haven't got it right at this point, you're stuck with it, and you've got to modify it in place. And at this stage, I still haven't figured out that I had one major mistake undiscovered. When you tighten it down, do it like you would a car wheel, work diagonally across and try to keep it all nice and level and have the stick flex squared out on all sides. I did get some out on all sides, uh, some sides more than others, but it did come down pretty level so I'm happy with it. Trying to hold everything in place and get a nut on this to secure the backing plate isn't easy in such a small space, but with a bit of perseverance it can be done. Got one on. Okay, now it becomes easier. I don't have to hold everything at once. Now, not 
quite yet, but I want you to coat the blade with the detergent when, when I'm ready. Alright, some of that. That, that. Okay, good. Enough? Yep, that's good. Yeah, let's step aside for a sec, I'll get in here. Uh, yeah, I got this one, but I will want more. Cut another one out. Now, I used a normal putty knife to clean off the excess sticker flex. And as you can probably see, this is where the duct tape really proves its worth. All the excess gets smeared all over that rather than the bait, and you can peel it off afterwards. One other little trick that's worth knowing about is get some detergent, some liquid detergent, and put that on your putty knife before you use it and that stops the sticker flex from sticking to that. Makes it nice and easy to clean your pills up afterwards. The only thing I will say about that is you only use that on the surface of the sticker flex because you don't want to go churning it up and mixing your detergent in with the sticker flex. For the YouTubers out there, that detergent on your tools stops the stuff sticking to it and makes cleaning up nice and easy. I've still got to clean up all this, well, not all of it, I was, I was as clean as I could be, but we have got a bit of a mess here we've got to go and clean up. So a bit of acetone on a rag will do the trick quite nicely. And the question is how long do I let that dry before I pull that tape off? I want to get the tape off before this sets hard enough to... Oh, okay. Uh, oh, might, might not have to go now, I think. Oh, oh. oh yes, Sonny, yes. Wouldn't have wanted to leave it much longer, would they? Oh, it's perfect. Oh, how good is that? That worked out well. And I took that tip from painting. I'd never used it on that sort of job before, and I thought, oh, this should work. And I just got a little tiny bit of maybe come back and fix that up after it's set, I think. It's, set, it's supposed to sand after it's set. Oh. Hey, very good. Thank you very much for standing by on that. Uh, uh, it doesn't seem like much, but it was very handy to have you there. I was wanted to make sure I got that on properly before the uh, glue set and pack everything up now. Because this min coat is off my previous boat, this is in the wrong spot. It's got to be over on this side. I don't really remember how this fits in. I'm hoping that all I've got to do is take this bolt out and it'll slide out and I can put it in on the other side but the horror feeling that there's a nut on there and it's going around so I am going to have to take these sides off first to deal with that She's off, and yes, there is a nut holding it there. set there now. I can put the anchor on, didn't have to set put the anchor on, but the Loctite on this, put it back on. 
There we go. Anchor's on. There it is mounted. Last thing to do is to try deploying it and see how that goes. Plug is in here. Let me go one way. Well, this is a good example of why manufacturers build prototypes before they go into production. Here we have mounted the mid-coder on the finished bracket for the first time, and we're about to do the initial deployment tests. Unfortunately, that's when the GoPro battery went flat, so I don't have any footage of the tests, but it's quite easy to explain what happened. I did everything that the manufacturer's instructions said about making sure that the shaft would clear the boat, and it would clear the anchor, and it had a sufficient gap. I was really confident it would work. When I did all the clearance calculations, I hadn't purchased the anchor, but I did know roughly the size of it, and I was careful to make sure that it wouldn't fell on the shaft. What the instructions didn't mention, and what I failed to anticipate, is that the actual motor is much bigger than the shaft, obviously. It can still hit the anchor, even though the shaft cleared it by a large margin. And that's all because of the way the encoder deploys. It moves the motor forward out of the cradle, then it tips vertically, and then it deploys downward. It didn't fail the anchor by much, and I think it may have pushed way past had I let it continue to deploy, but I didn't want to do that because eventually it's going to damage something, even if it's only the paintwork. Also, there's a safety mechanism in there that stops deployment if anything gets in the way, if it fails on something, so that may have engaged had it touched the anchor. In any case, I didn't try it. I stopped the deployment as soon as I saw that it was going to be a problem, and that left me with no alternative. I had to modify the prototype, and that was most annoying. Not only did it add unnecessary weight, but I felt that it somewhat spoiled the appearance of it, having this extra plate back on. On the plus side, anyone out there who wants to build one of these can benefit from my experience, and not make the same mistakes, hopefully. Mincoder's mounted on there, got a couple of zip ties, got to trim the tags off there yet, just to hold this out of the way when the anchor comes up. Could have actually used a little bit more slack on this cable, could have gone all the way up there, but haven't got it. If it ends up being a problem, I'll join a little bit into it and make it longer. I had to extend this plate out. First plate, the shaft and everything cleared the anchor, but the motor just fouled just on the edge of the anchor. So I'll extend it out, give it plenty of clearance now. Pretty happy with that. Just going to trim it up a bit. I'm going to turn the motor back around. I've turned it around once to put the propeller on the other side, but I think I can turn him back around now that I've moved the engines. So you pull this tag out here, push it up, spin him around 180 degrees, pull the tag out again so that he drops down into place and push it back and he's locked in there. Plenty of clearance on that anchor. Okay, well, quarter inch clearance, depending on where the propeller sits. Five mils, a little bit under quarter, I guess, five mils. I'm going to let him sit there and give him a go like that. If not, I'll turn him around. Mainly because this wire doesn't start off twisted. It starts off on the right side of the motor.
That's it. She's ready to rock and roll. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you got something out of it and that it has inspired you to see about mounting a min coder to your boat. So far I've concentrated on making a mount for my baseboard 620 offshore, but I plan to do one more short video where I will talk about the things you need to consider to adapt this to suit other boats. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button beside it to be notified when I upload the next video. I hope to have that done in less than a week. These videos will be placed in the Baseport Mincota playlist and there will be a link to that in the video description below. You can click on that to see the entire series or go to my YouTube channel and have a look at all of my videos. Don't forget if you'd like to have some drawings of what I've done, just message me on my Facebook channel and include the username that you used to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, good fishing!